Much of the increasing sophistication, uh, efficiency of business operations, supply chain management, production management, distribution systems, for instance, um, have depended in no small part up upon very sophisticated research done by people typically with a good grounding in mathematics, uh, but related fields as well, who have gone through elaborate intellectual processes of uh, looking at how things, uh, goods, services, inputs into a production process flow through systems and trying to identify those choke points or those bottlenecks where flows are held up. So very sophisticated research and with a lot of practical applications. So we see, for example, the use of Gantt charts from the, uh, the late 19th century. There's a, a particular um, approach called critical path method with, that I briefly note in the lecture notes that was influential in the 1950s. If we look at queuing theory, for example, I mean that, that there's very sophisticated mathematics of it. But if we uh, look at it in a very simplistic kind of way, we can just simply see at uh, how do one, does one most effectively design uh, the process of queuing to go through cash registers, for example, the efficiencies uh, and inefficiencies of having people line up for individual registers versus one common point and then moving, and sim simple scale issues of adding one extra staff member. What does that do to the total flow of customers through a process? Um, of paying for the goods, for example. Many of these um, things that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis obviously have very significant under underlying kind of mathematical dynamics, but also there are interesting psychological elements as well. For example, those who apply some of these mathematical models to understanding the flow of traffic through highways have realized that it's not just simply about maths, that there is a significant set of cognitive issues, for example, that simply if a road turns a certain way or there's an incline or whatever, um, very often drivers are triggered to slightly slow down the speed, put on the brakes, for example, through an excess of caution, and that that has cascading effects in terms of slowing down movement through, uh, of large volumes of traffic through a bottleneck. So it's maths meets psychology, um, particularly when you've got individual operator or driver discretion, for example, or customer behavior. And you know, who hasn't felt the frustrations of queuing, for example, and trying in some uh, emergent kind of way to figure out uh, which is the best way to go to get through the passport control, for example, quicker than somewhere else. So we all intuitively uh, sense that there are so many day-to-day -day applications for this obviously crowded Tokyo public transport system, for example, is, a, is a, a fine set of potential case studies for interested in it. So, uh, by the way, if you want to study this, Hayakawa Sensei here in Seals is a uh, renowned specialist in the field, so you can uh, take advice from her. Um, it does help to be able to do your maths, of course. Um, a lot of these basic concepts are also applied to the development of computer programming. And of course, uh, IT has been absolutely fundamental to streamlining operations, distribution systems, and whatnot, we understand it. Uh, but also, in a um, more straightforward kind of way, uh, understanding the complex dynamics of managing any large-scale project has, has always been a hugely important aspect of industries, such as, uh, obviously, construction. But any large-scale project where you've got so many different inputs and complex time frames, complex contracting, uh, you need to have a very systematic methodology for managing all of the points of information and effectively planning for a project. If you get that project planning wrong, it can lead to massive cost overruns, missing deadlines, and it can bankrupt your business, particularly if you have written contracts, for example, which um, have punitive clauses uh, for running over budget or over time uh, with a project. Now, of course, individuals too, our complex lives, uh, all you need to do is to look in the App Store, the Apple Apps, App, App Store or um, so many other apps you can find out there for, for PC and Android, uh, which takes some of these basic organizational 
principles, for example, Kanban, uh, you'll often hear this as a, you know, the Kanban system, which is associated with the way Japanese manufacturers have managed their um, uh, supply chains uh, for just-in-time production. So they take some of these basic concepts and then they apply them to the development of project map, uh, project management apps, um, and even uh, personal planners, to-do planners. So all you need to do is to go into the App Store and see this huge array of competing apps promising to help you organize your life. Finally, uh, some of the most interesting uh, entrepreneurial developments in recent years are in the space of providing the platforms, the digital platforms, the tools for particularly IT uh, programmers to collaborate on projects. So I've mentioned several times throughout the semester uh, to the wealthiest uh, younger Australians, they are the co-founders of a company called Atlassian. And they have made their many billions of dollars by developing a collaborative system for IT programmers, teams of programmers to work together. And it's got a wide range of applications in diverse project management spaces. So it's very much a hot field. And if you think with dramatic changes that have been compounded by COVID-19, for example, uh, the need to be able to work remotely but collaboratively, uh, the enormous growth in online shopping and the associated distributional challenges, we can see so many interesting innovations. One interesting uh, field which was uh, growing rapidly even before the COVID-19 pandemic and the, uh, the boom in stay-at-home shopping online is the application of latest uh, IT systems and automation to warehousing. Clearly, of course, Amazon uh, has led the way on this, but we see other firms, for example, Kuroneko in Japan, Yamato, um, have created state-of-the-art distribution systems, which are a combination of very sophisticated hardware and software uh, to give seamless distribution uh, to consumers, uh, geographically dispersed, but connected and wanting very timely delivery of products. So we're going to see so much more of this in many fields. It's going to really quite revolutionize the practice in industries that up until now haven't changed so much. But the COVID-19 pandemic uh, gives us yet more insights into the enabling power of technology and that those companies that really em embrace technological transformation uh, often have a more sustainable competitive advantage uh, over their uh, their rivals.